Some years ago, we invited, my family and I, this young man to room with us at our home. He was a college athlete and a full scholarship football player. Reason for staying with us, he was on his summer break and needed somewhere local to live, which would be in close proximity to his college. His parents lived several hundred miles away. Now, seeing this young man was large in size and had a workout plan devised by his trainer, I felt as though I was the one who lucked out because I could actually use a strong person to help me out on occasion, both in my shop and around the house. However, little did I know, even on his summer break, this young man had a schedule to which he adhered to faithfully. It went something like this. Get up around noon, eat what food we have prepared, go back to bed. Wake up again around 6.30, eat whatever we had fixed for dinner, then showering outwards. He would then take our car and our gas and drive to the school's gym. Said he was going to work out, but I wonder. Returning around 11 p.m., and without fail, he would gather whatever snacks we may have in the kitchen and take them back to his room, at which time he would talk on the phone and watch movies on TV until the wee hours of the morning, because I could hear it. Now, you won't want to miss the rest of this story, so please stay with us. But first, let me say welcome I'm Troy Wilson. I am so glad you have taken your valuable time to join us today for worship and renewal of the Spirit. I am certain you will be blessed. Now, back to our inexplicable house guest. It happened on one of these hot July mornings while I was out cutting our lawn with a push mower because we didn't have a riding mower. I guess one could say I came to my senses by way of adverse conditions. It never seems to be those pleasurable circumstances in which we have these enlightened moments. Amen. You know what I mean? Picture this. Here I am outside working in the heat and humidity so thick you could cut it with a knife. And this dude is in my house sleeping and eating free of charge. He doesn't care how hot it is outside because at some point during the night and without asking anyone else, he takes it upon himself to turn the AC down, down to the point where the rest of us would wake up freezing. And it was the middle of summer. As to his eating habits, we were now spending twice as much on groceries each week as we did before he came. Not to mention all of his special requests for snacks and sport drink. It was while I was cutting the grass next to his bedroom window that I saw his blinds move. Then he peeped out at me. My brain could not digest the disgruntled look on his face before causing me to have a major mental breakdown. It was then I pushed the lawnmower to the off position, marched inside with the intentions of barging right into his bedroom, but the door was locked. So I knocked quite heavily and persistently until he opened it. The conversation went something like this. Him. What's up, man? Me. What's up with you? I was just chilling, man. You know, trying to take it easy, he said. Me. Seems like you were trying to take it easy 24-7. Wouldn't you agree with that? Him. Well, to tell you the truth, I, I'm kind of giving this football stuff some serious thought. You know, man, I, I'm just not feeling it anymore. What I really need to be doing, he continued, is concentrating more on just finding myself. It was then I walked over to his room window, and while looking out, I enthusiastically exclaimed, I found you. What, he replied? You found me. By now, he's standing beside me at his room window and looking out. Me, continuing to express my excitement, yep, I see that's you out there pushing that lawnmower until the rest of the lawn is finished. He looks at me and then smiles. Oh, man, I, I thought you were serious there for a minute. Then he turns and walks back to his bed. Oh, I'm dead serious, I told him. Either you get up and start giving us a hand around here or you will have to find somewhere else to stay. So what did he do? He did reluctantly finished cutting the lawn, even though it took about three times as long as it should have. But the next morning, 
He informed our family his coach had given him permission to move back on campus for the remainder of the summer. Now, friend, another real tragedy related to this story is I later learned this young man, after the first week of tour days, which is strenuous football preparation, this young man resigned from the team, thus giving up his college scholarship. Folks, this is not an isolated story. Often we hear of someone trying to find themselves. What they are actually doing is trying to find a way out of working. Working. The most hated word in America today. Before long, we won't be allowed to say it anymore. We'll just have to refer to it as the W word. Neighbor, let's quickly point our attention to the Holy Bible and what it has to tell us as it relates to finding oneself. Number one, you will never know, listen to me closely, you will never know who you are until you find out whose you are. You get that? The Bible tells us this in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. 1 Corinthians. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. Ye have of God, and you are not of your own. For ye are brought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Folks, there is no in-between. Man either belongs to God and keeps his ways and his principles, or he belongs to Satan and will continuously be confused as to who he is. Now, I'm saying male, but it's male or female. He or she is. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but peace. Remember, if you have confusion, you don't have peace. You don't have joy as in all churches of saints. What does this mean? It means where there is Satan, there is confusion. But our God is not the author of confusion. Those serving Satan, now listen folks, those serving Satan are so confused, they do not have a clue whose they are. They don't even know what they are, where they are, or which way to turn. Friend, we are now living among the most confused generation in the history of mankind. Satan's latest fell antidote for the confused is this. Just simply declare everything and anything is okay. In other words, everything goes. Now, you might think I'm being absurd. However, several on the city council in Seattle, Washington, voted to decriminalize stealing if a person could prove they needed it. Now, that's true. Even if they needed it to sell to buy illegal drugs. Imagine that. It kind of reminds me of this saying by Huckleberry Finn's father. He said, never pass up a chance to steal a chicken because if you don't want it, you can always find somebody who does. Of course, Huckleberry said he never saw the time his father didn't want the chicken for himself. But getting back to Seattle, these confused leaders, and they, they're not just in Seattle, have already decriminalized most drug offenses, including ones committed by those considered to be drug dealers. Satan really has convinced those leaders and leaders across the country there will be no need to be confused about anything if they will just make laws saying everything goes, everything is okay. These same people also believe child molesters and rapists no longer should get jail time. What they really need is therapy and understanding. Friend, this way of thinking is just not coming from those who were raised in some crime-filled community or dysfunctional home somewhere. It's coming from many, many of leaders around the world. Leaders who were raised in an upscale, well-educated environment. In other words, they should know better, and they do know better. But these leaders have sold out to Satan's billionaires, and he has many, who are committed to demoralizing America and the rest of the world at any cost. It's true, my friend. Let me say this, and then I'm closing. 
If you are confused about anything, your very first stop should be on your knees connecting with the one who created you to begin with. And I can promise you the one you connect with won't be Satan because Satan doesn't create. He divides and destroys. That's his main mission. Our God is the only one and true God who is not confused about anything. He will bring you to know true peace and true joy as you have never before. If you would just ask him, will you do that? I can promise you, you will be glad you did. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for being a God of unwavering facts and principles. Facts which have been proven to work time and time again. When confused about anything, you, dear God, have provided the answer in your holy word. We ask you, dear God, to give us the strength to resist this ill, more confused people we now find ourselves living among. In Jesus' holy name, we pray these things. Amen.